muted there. Well, thanks for having me this afternoon. I appreciate it. Um, I'm here at Lemon Hole and Cancer Pavilion um, uh, here in Grand Rapids. So I, just to explain, so here at Lemon Hole, and there's three um, oncology, or actually now we have um, four oncology uh, dietitians at Lemon Hole Inn. Um, three of us are certified in oncology, meaning that um, we've worked with patients um, with on oncology diagnosis for at least two years and have um, 1,500 hours of experience. And then we sit for an examination. And this, um, we retake this every five years. Um, but at a, a base, you have to be a registered dietitian to get that credential as well. Um, myself, uh, Kathy, uh, Stephanie, and then um, Stephanie has a job share. Um, Jeanette is our newest um, person here on the team. And we work throughout the building here at Lemon Holt Inn. We work in radiation. Um, we work with our head and neck population, um, bone marrow transplant, um, infusion. Um, different surgical oncology groups. So it's just a matter, and we get the um, privilege of working with cancer rehab that Kara is connected with, um, with survivorship, but also um, another series that we're involved with um, living well um, through cancer. So it's, we're always here to help um, and always looking for um, feedback or if there's, you know, anything that you need either um, email or you can set up. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one appointments. We do both in-face and virtual. Um, and we have, of course, um, like other hospital systems, we have um, safety measures in place with COVID. So whatever your comfort level is, we can work with you there. So I'm excited. I've been with Spectrum 17 years, which is hard to believe. I don't feel like it's been that long, but the years go by. And um, I was an inpatient for 13 years and worked um, on the oncology floors there and then transitioned over here to Lemon Holt. And so I um, feel very fortunate to be here. And um, so hopefully I'm looking forward to the questions. Hopefully you guys find this informative um, and that you enjoy it. So I will go ahead. I should be able to share my screen. Is that correct? Yes, you okay. should be able to at this point. All righty. Can you see my screen yet or no? Not yet. Okay. Hold on just a second. There. There we go. Mm -hmm. All righty. So here I am <laughs> on the first slide there. Um, and it is December 9th, and like Beth was saying, it's hard to believe. No snow, but it's okay, I'll take it. So um, what I'm gonna focus on today, just I thought it was um, really uh, like a good topic is just talking about inflammation and diet um, for neuropathy, but also even beyond that. And we all can follow these guidelines. Um, and in this COVID pandemic, I think it's just um, good to kind of refocus. Um, so I'm gonna, if you've heard of the Mediterranean diet, this follows those guidelines essentially. But we're gonna talk about some different things. This is kind of just broad strokes here. Um, and then we'll talk about some micronutrients as well. So following a plant-based diet as we, um, chronic illness, but also pandemic. So through COVID um, is really can help with reducing inflammation. So some of the things we commonly think of and that are listed here, our beans, um, legumes, but also salads, fruits and veggies, um, nuts, whole grains, lean meat. So lean protein is important. And so looking at fish and um, chicken versus red meat. Um, not that we can't have red meat, but we like to limit it to no more than 18 ounces in a week. For a reference point, um, three ounces of meat is about the size of a deck of cards, um, if you think of it that way. And also changing how we prepare food. So using olive oil um, instead of like butter um, would be a better, or lard um, would be a better option um, to transition to that Mediterranean way. So um, we'll focus on some micronutrients that I mentioned before. And an antioxidant, one of the antioxidants we want to talk about is vitamin A. So this is really important um, for our skin and eyes. And as we get into these winter months, I know for me, um, my face, my skin gets dry. Um, wearing a mask, I feel like even more so, especially in the area that you know the mask covers. And I've found too, um, 
I don't know if I have them here. We also wear our, our goggles when we're with patients so that um, when you wear your mask and your goggles, we have like even more so our skin is even drier. So I, I feel like even more so on top of, you know, the other things you might do, vitamin A is really important. And the, all the screens we're viewing, at least for me, I feel like I know we've, um, we have three kids and um, we just got back in seat with our two kids in uh, sixth grade, but our middle, or excuse me, our high school has remained virtual. So even um, navigating through that for them having to do virtual school um, and, you know, just the change there. Um, so just making sure that their diets are rich in the color of the rainbow is what I always say. Um, so it, as you know, you see it, the, it listed, do you think of like your orange and yellow, reds and greens? Um, so, and you can see the different things listed, um, like our, our peppers, like our green, yellow, orange peppers, squash, we can still kind of get now. I know it's getting a little bit more difficult. That was more kind of our probably October, November season. Um, but any of these, if it's not at this point, like when it's not at its peak, I guess, um, you can always look at frozen, um, that is, you know, picked and, um, uh, it's gotten ready for, uh, distribution frozen. It's um, picked at its peak. Sorry. I can't, <laughs> can't speak apparently this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are always an option if you need, um, if you want the peak or the most nutrition and it's not in season is what I'm trying to say. Oh goodness. It looks like I froze. Sorry, guys. I always freeze on non, um, they're not the best view. I'm not smiling. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> do you want me to go back in or go out and in? Are you guys okay with my fun face there? Is that okay? All right. Sorry. I think eventually it'll unfreeze. unfreeze. <laughs> okay. If you just go right ahead, Sue. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, well, you can have a laugh anyway. So, um, so anyway, so the, uh, like, so like cantaloupe, like you can get, like if you go to the grocery store, but the, the quality of the fruit might not be there. The taste, like, you know, and it's not in season, a strawberry, if you purchase it now versus when you purchase it, you know, then the summer, the taste is different, right? Um, it's not as, you just, it's not as rich, I guess, to um, lack of a better term. So just trying to make sure if you can, and we have a guide at the end of this of how to find when it's in peak, um, the produce, and try to work around that. So um, anyway. So that was a long explanation, but some of the different things. So I tried to talk about some simple recipes that you could do. So if you guys have ever tried like kale chips, you could do that. Um, and there's, um, you could also do like spinach dip or like a mashed sweet potato with carrots or um, a Yukon um, potato. So just kind of, again, things that are real straightforward. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. I know for myself, um, having three kids, it really has to be straightforward or um, it won't occur. And remember that vitamin A is fat soluble um, so that it stays with you longer versus like a water soluble. So like a vitamin C is um, water soluble. So um, you don't hold that, hold on to that as much. Um, so you, that if you over consume in vitamin A, it's gonna be stored in your liver, but also some of the things too, this last part, um, always, I just remember always learning this when I was in school that if you have too much, you can look orange for the carotenoids. So you may have seen that before and they, they used to have pictures in our textbooks of they'd show the person with their hand, you, you can really see it in your hands um, or that orange um, part of their, it's just real prominent, but their whole body could be their face and so forth if you overdo. Um, so that's where food sources are definitely better than um, a supplement um, and so we, we always recommend food over supplements. So we would encourage you to continue to do that. Vitamin C, like I said, it's water soluble versus fat soluble. Um, in these winter months, um, it's important. We think of it, as it says, as a strong antioxidant. Um, so those free radicals, excuse me, that can damage our cells. We need to make sure that we're replacing that. Um, and it helps with... Um, reducing our inflammation, helping with antibodies, can help with reducing your recovery from a respiratory illness. Um, even like with COVID, if you have mild symptoms, a cold, it can um, shorten the length of the cold. Usually a combination of vitamin C and zinc is um, usually what we look at. Some of the sources, so again, look at the color of the rainbow. We look at strawberries. I know those aren't great right now. Blueberries, the BB stands for blueberries. I just got lazy and <laughs> typed it that way. And then the colored peppers, so again, the, the red, um, the uh, orange, 
yellow, green, like you could, the different peppers are great and easy to cook with. You can do like um, tacos, like the tortilla um, and just make it colorful in there. Um, that's always fun. Something quick and easy, your sweet grape tomatoes. So those little small ones you can throw on a salad or even just snack on, they're so fun. And then um, kiwi too, um, great source. Um, and they're, sometimes they're fun. Like I know um, our kids will buy them and um, they can cut them up pretty quickly, like in the morning for or with breakfast. They're usually pretty um, like able to do that because we have limited time in the morning. And then a fun recipe. So we're just kind of showing some other ideas like where you could do the fajitas with um, the, the peppers um, or like a, a different type of like teriyaki. So you could do that in a crock pot. You could also make a smoothie um, and I have, whoops, I actually jumped. I'm sorry about that, which I was supposed to show next slide. Um, but otherwise you can purchase like the Bolthouse Farms. I know those are pretty re readily available and you can see they are for one of the 15 ounce. And I don't know, most people probably don't consume the whole 15 ounces in one sitting. But if you were, it's um, like one gram or a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. And for a reference point, the amount of vitamin C we recommend is about 90 milligrams. So you can see the, it is uh, quite um, prominent there. And this is the um, smoothie recipe of just an idea. I know there's a lot of different recipes out there. So I think whatever works well for you. Um, but you could see like doing the orange juice with the um, Greek yogurt, which is also higher in protein. So that's a benefit. Also getting your calcium, which is not a bad thing. Um, your banana, frozen strawberries, because again, um, that just helps with the, the taste of the smoothie to keep it real cold. Um, and then also the, the blueberries. So again, it makes it, like we said, like frosty or cold. And then this is um, spinach. So it's kind of a hidden ingredient. And that's a good way if you do have um, people that are skeptical or um, may not want to do the spinach, it's really easy to kind of hide it in there. Um, and people won't even know what's in there, but, you know, gives you extra nutrients. So, and then blend it up until smooth. And you can try, you know, obviously adjust it to your flavor preference or profile, taste profile. All right, so the next micronutrients we want to look at is vitamin E, um, also a fat soluble vitamin. So just like vitamin A, it's um, how it's stored into your fat stores. Um, and again, helps with fighting infection. Uh, we find that um, like nuts are good sources. So whether you do a cashew or pistachio, any of those are good. That's a good source of fat or what we call heart healthy fats. Um, and we've listed some other ideas too, um, sunflower or um, seeds, excuse me, almonds, hazelnuts. So you can kind of see the list. The PB is for peanut butter, um, avocado. I feel like that's readily available. I know some of these products ebb and flow as far as for cost. So I think just seeing if, you know, if um, avocado are more pricey um, than maybe switching to something that more is in your price range. I know I, I watch that too, um, you know, for our grocery shopping because food prices can vary um, just for availability of a product or if it's in season or there can be several, you know, if there is a bummer crop that year of whatever, then, you know, of course the prices can go up. And some of it, to be frank, is what's available when you go to the grocery store because we still have some shortages with COVID. Um, I know sometimes I go to get whatever and you know they don't have it maybe for a month. And so you just have to be flexible with what's available. So here's just some good ideas for some recipes. Um, those power balls with oats, there's several different types of recipes for those. Um, pretty easy. So just kind of taking, like if you have some uh, quick oats, and um, you like can put a little honey uh, with um, different types of dried fruit. Um, so it could be cherries or raisins or blueberries or anything like that. Um, peanut butter that kind of holds it all together and you just really mix ingredients all together, put a little vanilla extract in there. And um, those are easy, quick and easy snacks um, on the go kind of thing. Or like we're saying too, just making your own trail mix and some different things you can do for that. So we're just trying to make it so it's not complicated and pretty hands-on. The only thing like I always struggle with when I make my power balls 
is it can get really sticky with the peanut butter and the honey, just FYI. <laughs> so you just have to wash your hands frequently, but it can be fun. It's a fun thing to do with, if you have kids or grandkids, they like to get in there and get at it. And so we have a lot of fun. All right, vitamin D is the next um, micronutrient that we wanted to focus on. Really important during the winter months. So we consider this to be between November and April. Um, and that uh, we often don't get enough sunlight or the sunlight that we do get is not, the, the rays are gonna be different just for where the sun is um, in relationship to earth. And so our absorption isn't gonna be as great or we don't get it as much as far as for vitamin D. So this is where a supplement, and that's why we mentioned the 2000 international units per day. Um, and you can do um, some, you know, if you do take a multivitamin, there may be some vitamin D in it. Usually it's like four or 600 international units. So typically you will have to take a separate vitamin D supplement. And again, we just recommend through the winter months um, that you get that extra. Food sources, um, we think of those that are fortified. So um, like milk um, is fortified with vitamin D, but there's also, you could do tuna or salmon are good sources as well, egg yolks or mushrooms as well. And then when I talked about earlier with vitamin C, I talked about um, the combination of zinc and vitamin C for if you have colds, it can short, or a cold, it could shorten the duration by combining the two. And so and zinc can just be the over-the-counter zinc, 50 milligrams is fine to do, or like we listed here, you can do like a zinc lozenge. Um, again, you can and find it any um, grocery store or online um, through Amazon or whomever, like um, whoever you shop with, um, they would have that available. And some of the different food sources um, include like beans, legumes, you can use chickpeas, hummus, um, your almonds again, or your nuts, your cashews and almonds, and then whole grains, but it's actually the bran layer where you're gonna find the zinc um, for that. How are you guys doing? And any questions at all? Or did we, I think we said we we're going to do them at the end. Otherwise, if anyone has any, feel free. I have a, a question right now, yeah. Sue. It's regarding the smoothies. What yeah. do you recommend adding protein powder? And if so, what kind? So protein powder, often we find most people get adequate amounts of protein. Um, the Greek yogurt can be on average like 14 to 16 grams of protein if you add that in. The other things in that recipe, which here we can bring up, oops, sorry, um, don't have protein in them. So fruit has no protein. Um, what is this it? Here we go. Uh, yeah, nothing else would have, the fruits and vegetables don't have protein. Um, so if you're getting like 14 to 16 grams of protein just from that, um, and you're getting other protein sources, so on an average, probably people need like 50 to 60 grams of protein per day. Again, I'm averaging, we'd have to figure out your exact needs, but you can calculate it like roughly if you take your body weight and divide it in half. That's about, again, this is like a real quick and easy, but there's more science to it than that, but that would be about what your protein needs would be um, in a day. So if you had a 140 pound individual, about 70 grams of protein in a day is what their needs were. So that's where you might not need to do that extra protein, what Beth was asking about in the smoothie. Because if you're at breakfast, if you're having a couple eggs, so two eggs, each egg is seven grams of protein. Um, and if you had peanut butter on your toast, um, a, a tablespoon of um, peanut butter would be another meat equivalent, so another seven grams. Um, any snacks that you have, you know, and nowadays I feel like a lot of the different protein bars, snack bars, I guess, are like easily 20 grams of protein. So often people get more than what they need is what I'm trying to say. So you may not need to do that. If you want to, or you feel like you're not at where you need to be that, like I gave the example for the 140 pound person needing 70 grams of protein, you could either try like whey protein, um, like usually depending um, on the scoop size, um, maybe on average it's seven grams of protein. I guess you'd have to look, it depends. Each, each protein powder is a little bit different. 
Um, and you can use like pea protein if you have any type of um, like casein or milk intolerance. Um, sometimes the pea protein is a better source. You could do soy if you wanted to. We would just ask you to be cautious um, with the different cancer patients, which I know neuropathy is not just with cancer, but um, if you are ER, PR, um, so estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor positive, we'd ask you not to use a, um, a soy protein. So if it's a soy protein isolate, which that's what the soy um, proteins are, or the powders are, excuse me, um, we'd actually not recommend to take those if you have the PR or ER positive, just on a side note. So sorry, that was a long explanation. I can get back to, I think we're, oops, on sync. Any, any other questions? That was a great question. Uh, we do have another question right now, Sue. Sure. We can ask it or wait until the end of your talk. It doesn't, whatever um, is best for you, it doesn't matter. Paul, oh, it's 71, has leukemic bone marrow, um, and he is a careful vegan for over 30 years. He would like mm -hmm. specific suggestions for dry eyes and dry skin. Okay. So as far as when we talked about the different micronutrients, um, were you, are you able to th do that? Is that um, from Paul? Like, do you feel like you're getting like the vitamin A that you need? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm very okay. careful about that. Okay. So that I think would be most beneficial and also making sure you're getting the amount of, so vitamin A, remember, and vitamin E are fat soluble. So that also can help. Um, both of those, the E and A. So I think just making sure, and even though, you know, being vegan, you definitely, you know, this is right up your alley as far as for the fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, you can get all that through the, through diet, definitely. And you wouldn't necessarily need to supplement. So good question or questions. <laughs> okay. So I think we went through zinc. Okay. The other question often we get is on probiotics. Um, so this is interesting, um, just that 80%, so over three fourths of our immune system is in the gut. So, so it's really important um, that we have good gut health, that um, we look at um, yogurts, um, sauerkraut, kefir is just kind of a drinkable yogurt, essentially is what I think of. Um, but these are great ways to introduce that into our diet if we don't already. Um, so some fun things you can do like a yogurt parfait, um, you can do, you know, adding yogurt like we did with that berry smoothie um, to, to your smoothie. That's a good way to, um, and then just, you know, some other examples. So you can do um, like how you, if you added nuts, these are prebiotics for your probiotics. So they're the, the precursor essentially to help move forward with um, those probiotics with gut health. So again, getting that variety is important um, and just with food itself can help really um, your immune system and help you fight off the different things as we go into this, these winter months. So the cold season and with COVID too, it can help with recovery. So we always like to say focus on food um, and just the combination of different foods. So the more color, the more variety, um, and really, it comes down to this last point here, the photochemicals, just, just photo means plant. So those are the, the chemicals, quote unquote, that come from plants. It's really hard to replicate. And so we just need to make sure that um, we're getting um, a wide variety of foods. Olive oil can help with absorbing that vitamin A. Um, so just a simple thing like that in a salad would help. Um, again, like if you did hummus, so you can use um, like red peppers to dip in your hummus. Um, that gives you again that zinc. You're getting your um, couple of your fat soluble vitamins there and your water soluble, your vitamin C, but also some fiber, which remember this helps with moving that forward for your prebiotic to your probiotic for gut health. Getting more variety in your shopping cart, so you want some color in there. But you also can. Um, I don't know, I know for us sometimes we'll try to cook and freeze or try to make stretch things into maybe two dinners if possible. Um, 
and I don't I make things as simple as as you can. So especially if you have a smaller family or if it's just you and one other person or or whatnot, um, you know, if you it's easier to cook one large portion and then, you know, you're only going to eat half of it because there's just you and one other person or just yourself, um, then you can freeze it and have another meal for later. So I definitely am all about that. Um, making things easier is always a good thing. And then to answer, or if anyone was wondering about supplements, if you need um, to do a supplement, we always say the first point is that nutrients are best um, from food. But if you needed to take a supplement, if it had been recommended, um, if you're anemic or have iron or um, your calcium, um, you needed to supplement calcium. One of the things you want to look for is something called the USP seal. And it's just United States pharmaceutical grade is what that stands for. And what it means is that they've been tested because the Food and Drug Administration does not test um, our supplements. And so they actually verify what is in the container is actually there. And so that's what they're like, it's independent uh, testing samples are not regulated normally. Um, and then just looking, making sure that the labeling is correct versus not. So that's kind of our take home message there for that. So this is that resource I was talking about for eating seasonally. So there's this great website, which hopefully you guys, sorry, mine's kind of blocked. I think you can, oops, you guys can see this. But anyway, you can type in, you can go to this link and um, type in what is seasonal at this time. And in the winter for us, it's usually citrus, which um, I know is not necessarily local, but it is domestic and it's at its prime, citrus in the winter months. Um, so that is something that, you know, um, you know, you'll get most nutrient, uh, biggest bang for your buck. And also we're supporting our local farmers. So here in Michigan, I think it's easier, obviously, in um, the non-winter months to kind of, you know, go to your farmer's market and support but I know there are some, or I don't know COVID, but um, pre-COVID, we did have um, on the west side some farmers markets that did run in the winter too. They would just be indoors. So there are definitely ways to support our local farmers and um, you know, just keeping things sustainable was really important. So then this is a nice, this actually comes from our culinary medicine group here at Spectrum. And again, how we talked about that photo means plant, um, or photo, excuse me, and the nutrients. So just making sure that we break that down, but then it gives you the color of the rainbow. What exactly, exact, excuse me, nutrient is in um, those uh, different colors and then health benefit in the different sources. So it just expands upon what we just talked about, but it's kind of a nice little schematic, um, kind of handy, like you could, quickly reference it. So that's why I thought it might be helpful. And if you want, we actually offer um, some classes through our culinary medicine group. And this is how to um, connect with them. And it's, um, I know this is the 2020 class series. We are coming out with a 2021, um, but they're all virtual. Um, and you can sign up. They try to keep the classes smaller, I think like 10 to 15. And they will send you um, like a guide for which, excuse me, I'm sorry, can't talk, which foods to purchase for the different recipes. And then in the classes, you'll prepare the foods together. And the, there's um, a chef and a dietitian that help you um, navigate through the different recipes. Uh, um, you do it together. Uh, it's all through Microsoft Teams, um, which they just send you a link. Um, you don't have to have anything special. Um, so it's really fun. Um, and they're trying to be innovative during these COVID times. Um, Pre-COVID, we actually had live classes. Sorry, we had live classes um, at our downtown market. So we're hopeful to get back to that soon. Um, but in the meantime, they do have the virtual that's offered. So it's just, again, how do we... You know, it's like, Sue, this is all great information, but how do I, I need the hands-on. This would be a way to do the hands-on for the, what we just talked about.
Okay, sorry, it keeps on changing on me. So anyway, I guess we're going to go to this one. <laughs> but um, we do have eating the Mediterranean away that actually does start in January, uh, January 11th and um, through the 15th. And you can see it's again, virtual series and what are some of the different things that are available or each week, sorry, that is available. So they have um, different breakdowns and this is also taught by our dietitians here at Spectrum. And a neat thing, um, there's another, here's our, they're actually gonna demo the berry smoothie for you. Um, but if you, I don't know, overnight, oh, it's just, they're just some fun things to kind of, um, see and ask questions about. And then there's also content, um, much like what I went through today, although I know I didn't do any demonstrations for you, but um, just really a, a great class. Um, it, it was pre-COVID um, an in seat hands-on class, but again, we've had to adapt. Um, and again, like I said, it will be through um, just like our culinary medicine, it's through the Microsoft Teams um, application. So, all right. I think that's all I had. Was there any questions for me? I tried to keep to my time, so hopefully. Do I need to stop, uh, stop sharing? Sorry, I can do that. Great job on the, the time. Thank you for this wonderful information on the micronutrients. Uh, group, do you have any questions for Sue? Uh, Let's see. Um, I do. Uh, um, you didn't mention any of the B vitamins. I was wondering whether the, those play, what role they play. So you can do the B vitamins. Typically, um, we get enough if you eat whole grains. You should be able to get enough of B vitamins. We don't typically see a deficiency there. Do you typically have whole grains mm -hmm. in your diet? Um, I try not to eat gluten, so it's oh, a little okay. bit harder. Yeah, that is then. So if you want to do, um, you can supplement with B vitamins, that's fine. They're also water soluble, so we're not concerned about toxicity at all. Um, so if you, you want to take an over-the-counter B vitamin, that's fine to do. Um, and there has been some, if you're thinking with neuropathy and that um, sometimes uh, that will be recommended um, to do just a standard dose um, and just making sure it has that USP seal. Um, usually Nature Made is one of the brands I'm trying to think offhand that will have that seal. Um, but there's a lot of different supplements out there um, that you can look for and see if that helps at all. Okay. Great question. Thank you, Susan. And Paul has shared a resource, um, a plant-based physician. I add Spectrum okay. is Christy Arts, MD, CCMS. Yeah, she's connected with a culinary medicine group. So that's the one, that slide that I um, talked about that they have, yep, yeah, that's Christy Arns, but then also our dietitian that's with her is Krista Gast. Um, and they um, are certified, oh goodness, lifestyle medicine coaches. Sorry, I was trying to get the title correct. Mm -hmm. So they're, um, their whole group, and then they have a chef, and oh, their, her name is, I'm blanking on her name. They have a chef that works with them too, but they've worked in coordination with GRCC's culinary medicine group. But yeah, thanks Paul for sharing that. I'm sorry I didn't mention Christy Arntz. I just, yeah, Krista Gast is the dietitian that I was my colleague. Thank you, great information, Sue. Really helpful to know what are the best things that we can do to help us maintain our health as well as deal with our neuropathy. Any further questions for Sue before we move to Kara? All right, thank you so much, Sue. And now we will go ahead and transition to Kara. Hello, can you hear me okay? You can. Good. Uh, yeah, my name is Kara Koleski. I'm a PTA, which is a physical therapist assistant with Spectrum Health. Um, I have been with Spectrum Health for 22 years. And like Sue, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, mostly with the outpatient orthopedic. Hmm. You froze up for us, Kira. So my first email planner. Oh. 
Okay, now we're, we're hearing you a little. Is that better? A little echoing. Okay. If you have um, Skype or um, any other video and audio application open, if you could close those. I do not. Is it okay. working okay? Now it seems good. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Technology. I know. Um, so for 18 years, I've done outpatient orthopedic. Um, in the last four years, I have been at Lemon Holton Cancer Pavilion, where Sue works, and uh, working with oncology rehab. So it's the same physical therapy that you know, with a focus on those that are um, having deficits from treatments related um, to their cancer diagnosis, um, which has been a real privilege, and I really enjoy doing that. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Everybody see that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so what I thought we would do is do just a quick overview of um, what peripheral neuropathy is and just kind of what causes it, just so we know all on the same page. Um, but I'll go through it rather quickly. Feel free to ask questions because um, I don't want to bog us down with that and we're going to get to what we can do about it here at the end, what can, um, it can be done and things, resources that are available to you. Um, if you have it, you probably know what it is, but um, the technical definition, it's when the chemotherapy um, drugs themselves damage the peripheral nerves. So there's two pictures there. The central nervous system um, consists of the brain and spinal cord, but the peripheral nervous system comes out from those structures out to the hands and the legs, the extremities. It's these peripheral nerves that get affected, unfortunately, by the treatments, many of them that are needed to fight um, a cancer diagnosis. Um, we need them obviously to kill the cancer cells. Unfortunately, that's what happens is the good, good cells also um, are killed off causing a lot of um, side effects and problems, which many of you probably know. One of them can be those nerve cells and that can be damaged causing this neuropathy. Um, some of the drugs that are listed there are part of chemo cocktails that are pretty common um, in the cause of this CIPN. We like to put abbreviations on big medical words because it's much easier. So you'll hear a lot of people call it CIPN. Um, so some of those might be familiar to you. It's obviously not a complete list. There's so many different drugs. Um, not everybody gets it. Um, it's hard to tell if you're going to or not. Other than that, the success, some of the drugs are extra um, extra culprits in causing it. But you can see some of the lists there. Um, if you've had um, a, more than one round of chemotherapy, you know, or other treatments such as radiation or surgery, um, either before or after your chemo can be a risk factor. Um, longer or high doses, obviously, because you're gonna have more of the chemo drug administered will be a risk factor as well. Um, and then some of the other health history stuff, you know, alcohol abuse, diabetes, um, some of the other things that are listed there um, can just have some of an effect of increasing that your risk of getting CIPN. So when's it gonna start? Well, it's different for everybody um, and it can happen anytime after you get your treatment started. Um, and again, remember, some people don't get it at all. It's very um, kind of hard to predict. And sometimes they usually start mild and can worsen. Can't tell you how bad it will get. Um, that's what makes it kind of hard and everybody is different, but it's nice to have support groups like this that you can know that you're not alone when it can be frustrating for these reasons. Um, biggest question I hear, will it go away? It can. Um, they get better, the symptoms will get better slowly. It can come on a lot faster than it can get better, which is frustrating. We always want things to get better right away, of course, right? Um, but unfortunately, it's really time. Um, usually, if you start seeing an improvement in your symptoms, it's a good indication that it will go away, at least mostly, um, but it just takes time. You can't speed up time. Um, so, there are instances where the damage will not go away um, and it can be permanent. Uh, and again, there's nothing that can predict if it's gonna stay, 
but you have to wait, wait in the time. PIPN is not always just painful. Um, there's all kinds of things you can see here. And if any of you have CIPN, you can probably attest to some of these. It's sometimes people aren't painful at all. It just feels weird because the sensation is altered, you know, um, maybe a numb feeling or even extra sensation. So the sensitivity to cold heat or touch or something that can happen. Um, the weakness can come because the nerves are affected. Um, therefore, sometimes you can feel off balance or have trouble walking. You can see on that second column, um, it all kind of combines to cause these problems, the, um, the symptoms do. You might have heard the stocking and glove distribution, which is just, again, we like to have um, abbreviations and things that make sense to us, right? So this is usually what we see as far as a pattern of where the symptoms are. Um, it does not have to be all four of these areas though. Sometimes it's just the hands or sometimes it's just the feet. But like it says in the first line there, it is both. So if you're having some tingling in your right hand, it's more than likely not chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy. It can be neuropathy, but probably not from the chemo drug. It's usually, I don't wanna say 100% of the time because I can't say that, but it's very, very rare to have it just be one side or the other. So either gonna be both hands or both feet. And what does it feel like? Well, those are some things I've heard from my patients, what they tell me um, that are pretty common. Um, there's probably some other ones that you could add to that list. It could be a long list because it's a very subjective thing. And it, like I said, it's different for everybody. And there's different grades. Sometimes it's mild and it gets more severe as you can see as it goes up in grade four. Um, what I want you to get out of this slide is not so much what grade is what, it's just that if you're starting to notice that the tips of your fingers or the tips of your toes are a little tingly, to report it right away to your physician because there are a lot of alterations or adjustments they can make sometimes in your treatment plan that can help diminish or reduce the um, effects that it would have on your nerves. That statement right there is kind of negative and I don't like it necessarily, but it's true. So there are no treatments for peripheral nerve that's gonna just fix it, okay? We can't say, you know, do this so that you can get it to go away. Um, but there's a lot that can be done to help manage it. Um, like Beth said at the introduction, it's not something you can just get rid of. You can, sometimes it's permanent and we can live with it for a long time. So it's important to know how to work on relieving and managing the symptoms that come with it. So there are different things that we can do to find some relief um, and help with the symptoms, um, different combinations of drugs. Like I said, if you talk to your physician if needed, but chemo dose reduction or even cessation or stopping treatment has had to happen for some people. Sue just talked about all the good dietary um, nutrition that we need to help stay healthy and um, other types of therapy, which brings me to the next slide. There are a lot of other things you've probably heard of. Um, I put occupational and or physical therapy in blue so it stands out because of course that's my favorite. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, there are a lot of different things and um, it, the other things on the list, the exercise and relaxation, distraction, massage, those are some things as well as the TENS, which is um, use of electrical current um, that can be incorporated in physical therapy as well. But you may find relief from going to a massage therapist or making sure you take a walk every day. Um, not all of these would need a doctor's prescription, which is kind of nice too. Um, but let's go farther so we can talk more about what physical therapy could do for you. Um, as far as like my role with cancer rehab, um, chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy impacts your function as you can probably know or tell. And so difficulty with performing your ADLs, those are activities of daily living. So the things we do every day, getting dressed, showering, being able to clean the house or drive, um, if our hands, you know, even zipping up zippers, things that we would do every day. Um, 
gate changes, balance deficits. You can see the things in there. These are all things that affect your quality of life. The quality of life is just how well you're doing with the needs that you have to um, complete each day of your life. So um, as this gets harder, we can also have some increased distress, depression, and anxiety as you deal with this. Um, and so it's important to look at all of these as we work with patients through cancer rehab. So our goals, if we're working with somebody that comes to us, um, is to look at all those things, um, to see what we can do to help reduce the symptoms so that hopefully we can improve functional status, um, which will then improve quality of life and have you happier, have better participation and you know, have value in your activities. Uh, you can see how they all go together and it's why it's really, um, it's fun to work with people and to be able to have this common goal in mind to make life a little bit better if possible. One of the things that we would do specifically and not all of these would be for each person. Um, we would do a physical therapy evaluation at a first visit to see what the needs are or how CIPN is affecting you. Um, and some of these are utilized. The picture there just shows a balance activity <clears throat> that might be way too hard for some or not challenging enough for some, but I just thought it was a fun picture of something that we do. Um, the Lympha Touch machine is something that we do at Lemon Holton Cancer Pavilion. It's not provided everywhere, but it does help with blood flow to the area, which we have found that decreases some of the um, sensation deficits and or painful feeling in the feet and the hands. We've had some success with that. The going to physical therapy or a massage therapist can either cost money or you need a prescription, but there are some things that you can do too um, that you can do in the meantime or is along with attending some of those other therapies. Um, but massage, you don't have to see a massage therapist, but even just rubbing, I have some patients that are just, you know, if you rub your feet at night, it can feel a lot better. Um, regular exercise, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, just to use the muscles, use the nerves and get your blood flowing. Um, that's what your body needs and wants and will work better if it's getting those things. Um, medications, which would be prescribed by a healthcare provider can help if necessary to help um, really decrease the pain. Um, but you can also decrease pain and frustrations and the things that come with CFPN through listening to music or meditation or prayer, um, guided imagery, those kinds of things you can all do on your own um, to kind of help manage the symptoms as well. Foot and hand care. So not only taking care of your whole self, but the parts that are affected. Uh, I'm not gonna read through that whole list because you guys can read, um, but it's some things we don't think about sometimes like testing the water temperature before you just go to do the dishes or um, doing your bathing activities. It's easy to kind of burn your hand if you don't have all that sensation. Make sure you wear gloves in the winter. I have some patients that wear gloves uh, in the house in the summer because the air conditioning hurts their hands because it's too cold. So um, it's not strange. Not everybody wears gloves in the summer in their house, but it can be helpful. So some things we just sometimes don't think about. as well as home safety. So um, like I said, if you don't have all the sensation, you can become weak. You can also have balance deficits. We don't wanna make any harder, life harder than it has to be. So, you know, if you really have trouble with balance, you might need a cane or something. And we can go over that if you were to see a physical therapist um, to see what would be best for you if needed. But um, make sure you have handrails, you know, sometimes you take, remove clutter or throw rugs can actually be your demise sometimes. Um, so either make sure they're tacked down or just get rid of them. Um, adequate lighting. Sometimes we don't think about that. You get up during the night to go to the bathroom and you forgot that you left a little pair of shoes on the floor and you might not see them. So um, use good lighting, use a, a nightlight, things like that. So 
really, it's a major problem. It's very common, but that doesn't make it normal. Uh, it's a real challenge to prevent it um, with treatment, but always, always, always ask for help and communicate. So there's help out there, there's ways to manage it if we know what your needs are. So make sure you're talking to your medical team um, if you're having these kinds of issues so that it can be managed appropriately. Um, or you can get referrals to things like physical therapy or massage therapy. Um, the safety tips we talked about, management techniques, those are things that you can just do for yourself every day to help. Um, educating yourself is really important. Always being your own advocate um, things like this is great. I'm glad everybody tuned in. Hopefully you took something away that you can use to help manage any symptoms you might have. Um, the support groups, yay for Gilda's Club, and a bunch of other places that have things like this. So you know you're not alone. 